Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno. Welcome back to my game engine series. So last time we took a look at the scene hierarchy panel, basically some kind of way of displaying all of our entities on the screen so that we can actually like, you know, select them and see what's up. And today, and that video is going to be linked up there, by the way, today we're going to continue on with that. And now when we select our entities, our goal is going to be to actually display information about what components our entities have in a separate panel, which we're going to call the properties panel, which is basically very similar to the inspection inside unity okay let's just dive in and is my hair cut off so unprofessional okay so uh let's hit a five we'll see what we had last time so last time we had this uh beginnings of a scene hierarchy panel which we could keep over here it, it displays every single entity that we actually have actually i, I really wanted to change fonts as well but we'll, we'll talk about fonts in a different um episode because we probably want to actually add one to the repository uh but basically we had our clip space entity uh, our camera entity and this green square. Um, and then the camera entity, we could also control by the script and all of that. So my point is we obviously have three entities here. It would be really good to be able to see what, I don't remember, what, what is clip space entity? Stream, can you help me out? What is, what is clip space entity? Clip space, did I make that? Was that merged or something? What on earth is clip space entity? I don't remember making, well, why would I name it that? It's a camera. All right, anyway. Back to the professional. I'm gonna have to do some editing on this video. I hate doing that. Whatever. Clip space entity. What? Well, why is it a clip? It's a camera that we can switch to. Well, so the scene hierarchy panel here displays all of the entities in our entire scene. I think we even added some uh, loose UI support for parenting, which is pretty cool. But now it would be it would be really good for us to be able to select these entities and view some more information about them, such as what components they have, because of course that would be uh, useful. Because not only could we see what we've actually added programmatically, we also want to eventually have the a have the UI to be able to add new components to any entities and also like create new entities and essentially build up scenes. So what we're going to be doing today is creating another panel, which is going to be called our properties panel, very similar to like the Unity Inspector panel. And this is going to be something that we will pro we'll, we'll probably end up using this for more than just the scene hierarchy panel and its selection context. When we have things like assets and we might want to change like the import settings, then uh, it'll probably also show the properties for basically anything that is selected and has properties in our entire like hazelnut editor here. But for now, I want to be able to take the currently selected entity and display some information about it. And that's going to be our goal for today. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Now, I think the first thing, if we're going to see a hierarchy panel, it's pretty easy to get this up and running. Last time when we actually created this, um, uh, all of the, like this, this scene hierarchy panel with the, uh, you know, selection context and all of these, I am GUI tree node, uh, thingies, tree nodes, tree node, like tree nodes. I guess that, that makes sense. Um, we, we had the, we, we also added this support to actually select a particular entity, right? So if I'm GUI is item selected, I'll zoom in. Um, then we actually set our selection context. That was important so that we can actually display, you know, which tree node is selected. And that's why you see it highlighted. So since we've already got the selection context, which by the way, is of course an entity, we've already got information about the entity that's currently selected. So once we select something, it's just a matter of seeing, you know, what the entity is, which is just selection context and actually retrieving its components. And also when we add the UI to be able to add a component such as like, a camera component or a transform component, transform component probably already exists, but things like mesh components or script components, then obviously we'll be adding it to the current selection context. Now I also want to be able to deselect things, um, which we'll talk about in a minute as well. So to do this, let's, let's go up here. Now we have our scene hierarchy panel. I'm actually going to add this properties panel right over here inside our scene hierarchy panel uh, file just because first of all, at the moment, it is completely just used for the scene hierarchy panel in the future. When we do have it across more of the engine and we'll probably refactor this out into its own class, but to keep things nice and simple, I'll keep it here. We'll call it properties. I'm going end. And now it's just a matter of seeing, Hey, is there anything in the selection context? So if selection context, we can actually draw our components. Um, so whether or not you want to, uh, label this, uh, as so, I guess that's probably fine. Um, avoid draw components. I'm just going to bring it out into a function just to keep things a little bit more simple. No, I want to create implementation. Uh, and then over here, we're actually going to draw all of the component UI. So we've got the selection context. Um, now, 
probably worth actually passing in the selection context here, just because uh, that way, you know, if we for whatever reason wanted to draw, you know, something else, um, then we can actually easily uh, just pass in a different entity. Um, and then what this is going to do is actually ask the entity, hey, do you have certain components? And if so, let's draw some UI for it. So uh, let's start with like probably the tag component realistically is what we want to start with. But we basically want to go through all of these. Um, tag should be the first one because we also want to have some kind of editable text box that will let us rename that stuff. So let's go with the tag component. Um, and then if we go back to edit to layer, we were already doing something similar, I think. Oh, actually, no, sorry. We are doing something similar inside the scene hierarchy panel because of course we are drawing the actual, uh, where is it? The actual, here it is, this, right? We're actually, you know, the name of the uh, tree node inside the scene hierarchy panel is of course the name of the entity. So we can retrieve that tag component if it's got it. I mean, it's going to have it, but we'll still leave the if check in here. Uh, and then we just need to we just need to actually display it somewhere. Now I've already done this in Hazel Dev, so I'm going to steal some code from there, of course. But basically, uh, what I did was I just added a I am GUI input text. Now I didn't give this a name, and we'll talk about why later. But I will call it tag for now. Uh, but in Hazel Dev, I basically did a little bit more with the UI to make it look prettier because I don't like, for example, the fact that IAM GUI labels are always on the right. Like that's a bit weird. I like to have the label on the left. So the way that you usually achieve that in IAM GUI because it doesn't have support for that is you basically just don't, you don't display any kind of text as the actual label. Instead, what you do is you actually just do like an IAM GUI text display here. You split up your actual window into like two columns and then you can actually draw like the text or, and, and then like the label and then the actual control on the right side as well, which we might do in the future. Again, not really too worried about polish at this point in time. We're just trying to get functionality down. So we'll have the, um, we'll have, uh, the tag here. And then obviously what this does is it actually takes in a buffer pointer and a buffer size. So to get this to work, um, there's a few different ways you could do that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about it now, actually. I think that the best way probably to do this is just to have some kind of local buffer. The pro one, one, of the, one of the issues with having a local buffer, and by this, I just mean literally having like a buffer like this, is that 250, 256 bytes on the stack, this isn't a recursive function, so I don't think that's gonna be too much of a problem. We could, of course, just make it static or even like static to this translation unit out here and use a kind of like a scratch buffer, maybe make it a little bit bigger. Um, you can make this bigger, of course, but basically what this is going to be is this is going to be our string that is our tag, all of the characters there, but also we need to provide it with some more room than is actually inside this tag because obviously we could potentially rename the entity and make the name be longer than what is currently stored inside this string, inside the tag component, and that would obviously overflow that buffer. So because of that, we need to we need to have some kind of temporary buffer here. Now this, by, by temporary, I just mean we literally just need it for this scope, but it's also perfectly reasonable to have it as a, just a global scratch buffer or something like that that you can constantly reuse. Having it like local to the stack though might be nice, but again, it doesn't really matter. I'm not too fussed with it. For now, we can leave it in here. So we're basically gonna pass in this buffer and then the size, of course, is going to be, well, it's on the stack, so we can just write size of buffer. And that's it. Now we've got, um, and I think that wants the size in bytes, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and that's it, right? So now we can obviously handle it changing. And if it does change, we're not actually passing in the, the source string yet, but we'll get to that. Um, if it does actually change, then guess what? We need to take this tag and just basically assign it to a new SD string, potentially with this actual buffer. And I think that's fine because there's a constructor obviously that takes in a const chart pointer. It should be null terminated and I think everything will be fine. So to actually make it null terminated, first of all, I'm going to set uh, everything to zero, right? So I'm gonna just mem set it to zero and then I'm actually going to mem copy probably do a string copy. I don't really know. See, the thing is, this may break if like you're dealing with wide strings or wide chars, for example. I don't know. I don't know if we want to support wide chars in the future. Usually, usually I would be all about that. But I think that like for game engine entities, do we want to support like, you know, extended character sets like for different languages? Maybe. Uh, if we do, obviously this code has to be rewritten, but for now we'll ignore that stuff and we'll do things the simple way. So now we'll do a little bit of a mem copy to go from, uh, to go from 
well, into buffer, we're just going to, um, we're just going to grab the C string of tag. Uh, I guess I'll do a string copy. Uh, and then that's it, right? Uh, and then, so now what we should have done is if we had an entity called camera, then obviously, uh, you know, that's what the memory looks like for it. Camera followed by like a, an actual zero, not a, not a ASCII character zero. Um, and then what we're doing here is allocating enough room for it. Uh, well, enough room for it and as well as what we could potentially edit it into. And then, uh, which 256 again, if we technically go over that, yes, everything will crash. Probably not a great example of this. Although I don't think it will happen, but I don't think everything, anything will crash because that's probably why we're providing I'm GUI with the size. That's the maximum size. We're just not going to be able to enter any more characters uh, than 256, which I think is reasonable for now at least. Um, then we're setting every single byte of this buffer to be zero. And then we're copying this camera, uh, probably without, what does the string copy, copy the zero? I don't know if it does. Anyway, we're, we're copying just basically the entire string into this now, in, into this buffer that we've got here. Then we're giving that in to I'm GUI. And that's what we're editing when we actually input text into this UI control. So that's what's going on here. And again, if it changes, we do that. That's pretty much it. You know what? Let's just, let's grab that for now and let's just give it a run. So if there's a selection context, we should be able to draw the name and we should be able to change the name of our entities now, which is pretty cool. I mean, that didn't take too long, but we've done something nice and powerful. And I guess we, should, we, we probably like the compiler there was actually telling us that, uh, that we're doing something wrong. Well, it was warning us about, where's my output? It was warning us uh, because we, if we look at the build, because string, cop, uh, string copy function may be unsafe and that we should use string copy underscore s or CRT secure no warnings. So I guess we will use underscore s. The only real difference between uh, underscore s is that this actually takes in some kind of size um, and the size is actually a, uh, a compile time thing. That's a bit weird. I didn't know it was that. No, size in bytes and then source and then size and bytes supposed to be the destination size. So this would be 256, right? Or size of buffer. That was weird. So I guess there was a templated version, but anyway, so that, that basically lets us, um, that basically protects against overflows because obviously now there's actually validation for how big destination is. Um, obviously we know how big source is because it's going to be up until the null termination character, but destination, no clue if that will fit or not. But now we do because we're actually validating that. All right, let's take, let's take another look. Um, and we should be able to see our properties panel, which is over here. All right, let's grab that and dock it into here. Now it should stay here as long as our I'm GUI.ini file gets written to. And now if we click on these various things, you can see that we see our tag. And again, I, I really don't like the label being on the right, but we'll change that eventually. And now we should be able to take this clip space and I see no idea why it's called that. I believe that's our second camera, camera B. Let's rename it to camera B. So if I get rid of that and type in camera B, obviously, as I type like the A key and stuff, it actually moves the camera, but you can see that now we've renamed it to camera B, which is pretty cool. So up here, it shows up as camera B and we also see it here. Awesome. Now let's continue on with this stuff. Let's go into the transform component. Now the transform component is a little bit tricky um, because there's a lot of different controls that we likely want for this, translation, rotation, scale, stuff like that. Let's just deal with the translation for today and then we'll, we might actually dedicate an episode to transform components because they are, they can be very, very confusing. Um, so to do this, what I want to do is uh, basically just have a little bit of a, like a, a float three, uh, like a drag float three or something um, that goes over drag float three that just goes over, um, we'll call this uh, translation or position, I guess, that goes over the last column of the matrix. So get component, transform component, dot transform. And then if we actually just do GLM value pointer, transform. And is this gonna want, is that, is that gonna be fine? I guess it should be, right? Um, yeah, it is gonna be fine. Cause it is a VEC4 technically, but again, we're just doing value pointer and we probably need to include that. So GLM GTC type pointer. Um, and then, oops, and then we'll do, so we'll do a drag float and then we'll do speed of one. Yeah, we'll do maybe speed of 0.5. 
um, min and max, we won't touch, obviously, and then that's it. All right. So now we can basically, and we can check to see if that's been modified. I don't know if I've talked about this, this but I'm GUI with pretty much any widget that I'm GUI has, it returns a Boolean, right? So that Boolean is whether or not it's been used, whether or not it's been modified. So that's obviously very useful because instead of constantly like, well, actually we don't need it for this, but uh, in the case of like rotation, you know, rotation inside a matrix, you probably want to decompose the matrix, get the rotation possibly as a quaternion, and maybe convert it to like Euler angles or something like that. Um, and then modify that and then reconstruct the matrix. Instead of doing that every single like frame, essentially every single UI rendering, uh, instead of doing that, you can actually detect whether or not that rotation or translation, or the matrix has been changed or not. And then if it has, then you can update it and like, you know, recalculate it. Um, which, are, which is obviously a lot better for, for performance. So in general, just keep an eye out for things like this. You don't want to be doing stuff if you don't need to, just do a little if check, and then, then that way you can respond to your UI controls actually being tinkered with. So um, in this case though, we actually don't need to do anything because it's just going to modify the matrix in place since we it's just the, it's just the translation. We don't need to actually uh, rebuild the matrix or anything like that. Okay, so now if we hit F5, um, we should hopefully see, uh, the transform. Okay. So there's our camera entity, clip space entity. Obviously it didn't save the name. Um, but you can see it's got a position here. Uh, oh, we need headings for all these components, don't we? We'll do that in a minute. Um, so we have all of these things and then we can obviously, uh, shift this around. 0.5 might even be too much here. Um, maybe I'll make it 0.25. It's kind of difficult to set a value like that. Obviously, I don't know what like unity does. Um, maybe I should investigate, but maybe it's up to your zoom level as well. I'm not sure, but obviously it's hard because you don't know how big the scene is going to be. Um, although I guess moving by like, what is, what's that going to be like 25 centimeters or something every, um, you know, every, uh, yeah, might, might be harsh, you know, maybe something like 0.1 would be a little bit more reasonable for dragging these things around. But anyway, the point is we can now obviously, um, move around, uh, you know, we can grab like this green square, for example, and then shift it around, or we can grab the camera and then we can like shift the camera around. Uh, and we can, we can control that now using our properties panel, which is pretty cool. Now I want to, um, uh, I want to have some kind of heading for this, right? So we should have an actual, like, essentially some kind of, I think what the, what I did in Hazel dev was I basically had like a little bit of a tree node, uh, header for it, right? The same way, the same thing that you, that we saw inside the scene hierarchy panel and all of those, uh, various entities there, um, just so that we can essentially collapse components that we don't care about and organize things a little, a little bit better. So the way that I did that was basically I had, um, if it's got a transform component, we don't need to display it if we don't have it, but if it's got it, then I basically just made a tree node here which uh, needs to take some kind of unique identifier for this. Now, what did I use here? I basically used entity. Um, mm, this doesn't really matter too much what this is, as long as it's unique. I think what I did in Hazel Dev was I just basically got the type ID of transform component, because obviously that's going to be unique across all of these components. So if you just use C++'s type ID, with transform with transform component, and then you get the hash code for it. That will that should give you a unique uh, integer that will basically represent that particular type, um, and that way you won't get conflicts with any other ones. I I don't know if that will actually conflict with this tree node. No, I mean it shouldn't because it's in a completely different um, it's in a completely different window. However, we will talk a little bit more about I'm GUIs like identifiers and stuff in the future, because we'll be like pushing and popping IDs and handling UI a little bit differently than we are now, because obviously right now we're just doing I'm GUI stuff and crazy stuff like this. But in the future, we want to be a little bit more, um, I guess, abstract with how we, how we actually handle our UI as we begin to develop our actual style for our editor UI. And that way we want to obviously reuse our kind of style library instead of continually just using I am GUI's raw stuff. Um, anyway, so we'll have the hash code. Uh, we'll do, um, I also did default open, right? So I am GUI tree node flags, default open, because we want all of our components to be open by default. We don't want to have to go through each of them and open them. That's a bit weird. Um, and then uh, we'll call this the transform component, obviously. All right, so if it is in fact open, 
which it should be by default, then we'll display all of this stuff. If it's not, then it's not. And then obviously at the end of this, we need to do a tree pop. There we go. So now if we take a look at the difference between uh, what we had and what we just added, then as you should be able to see, um, we now have a header for this called transform that we can collapse um, and it should be expanded by default. And again, we, we'll, we'll deal with like padding and stuff like that later, but we're just getting the base kind of layout down. And we also wanna have some kind of like plus button potentially, or some kind of extra button here that we can click to remove um, like this component, uh, maybe even like to copy the component so that we can paste it to a different entity, stuff like that but we'll leave that as is for now. What other components do we have that are useful? Um, I think we've got, if I just look at components, oh, I wanted to do deselecting as well. Native script component at this point, no point displaying that. Um, camera, sprite render, transform. Uh, I guess the camera component is something we could talk about, but this, this is like one of those things that's gonna take like half an hour to implement properly. So I'm tempted to just leave that for a different episode because this is more of an overview. But what I wanna do is uh, talk about des deselecting as well. So at the moment, we actually have no way to deselect an NC. So once we've selected this and the properties panel has this, that's kind of it, right? The properties panel is always gonna display this because we are always, we, we, we always have this entity as our selection context and we've got no way to clear it. However, um, we can obviously make it so that when we click on a blank space inside the scene hierarchy or in the scene even, we're not doing picking through the scene yet, but when we do, then that will just deselect everything. So to, to make the blank space inside the scene hierarchy panel work, we basically want to go into um, where we render it. And then after we've done all of our entity node stuff, we can actually just check to see if, uh, well, it'd be great to use something called is item clicked. However, that doesn't work with windows. That works with actual items inside windows. So for this, we can just do if the window is hovered, right? And uh, the mouse button is pressed. So if mouse um, is mouse pressed, is mouse down, is mouse down. Uh, button zero, I guess, which is left mouse button. I don't know if there's actually an enum for it. Um, I guess I might be able to check left. Is that a thing? Zero equals left. Well, they've just got documentation here that says to use zero. So I assume zero is fine. So if we press the left mouse button and this window is in fact hovered, um, uh, then uh, we're going to set selection context to nothing, right? We're going to clear it like that. Now it's worth noting that this mouse down is window hovered situation. Uh, this actually has uh, this thing called I'm GUI hovered flags, um, which we can set. And you can see that by default, um, allow when blocked by pop-up. So return true, even if a pop-up window is normally blocking it, or if, um, uh, I think that's if blocked by active item. So basically, by default, what that's saying, because you need a special flag to allow it even when it's blocked by an active item, items will actually block this. So if an item in like if an item before we get to this point in the window has already handled our click, then it's not gonna it's not gonna respond here. So what that means is that um, when we actually draw the entity nodes here, like which is the rest of everything else, and we do our selection here, that's going to happen first, and thus it's not going to filter all the way down to here. So this will truly be if you click on a blank space, not if you click on something and then the other other entity as well. So you can see I can still select them as normal, but if I click here, that's it, they're gone. And in fact, I can even click in between, and it'll go away as well, which is pretty cool. So now I can deselect entities, which is pretty amazing. Okay, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, I don't know what to replace with this. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this, is this episode of the Game Engine series. Don't forget to hit the like button if you did. You can also help support the series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel, where you will find all of the Hazel Dev code, which I've both mostly been stealing code from throughout this entire episode, as well as just a much more advanced version of Hazel with like a full on like level editor and like 3D graphics and Vulkan support now and C-sharp scripting and just, it's, it's amazing. You need to check it out and also help support everything uh, that you're seeing in front of you. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. As always, stream is over here to say goodbye as well. Bye, YouTube.
works stream. <laughs> and uh, next time we're gonna probably continue on with this stuff. Again, I don't want to focus too much on UI for components just yet. I want to get everything kind of up and running and then we'll start actually refining it and going over it, making our editor and hazelnut look pretty with like different fonts and stuff like that. And just generally polishing it into uh, what should be hopefully an amazing engine. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.